but you can see the fleet coming out of Chesme in the background there. And they've got the flags ready to go. This is the main one, the class flag. It goes up at four minutes, comes down at one. And this is the one you don't want to see, which is the one that says you've jumped the start. And you have to go back. To Cheshme. We've been here a few weeks now. We're settling in. The weather's been a little bit touch and go, but we have got a nice evening tonight. <laughs> yeah, we've been getting a few boat jobs done, inside ones when it's bad, outside when it's when it's not, and uh, a little bit of travelling as well. Yep, a little bit of travelling too. I hope you like the film. Coming up, finding out what else is broken in the engine room. Joining the local dogs and cats for a stroll around Cheshme. And you can't come to Turkey without visiting the famous and beautiful mosques. So if you come to Çeşme Marina, the man you need to see is here, Ennis. Ennis does just about anything you want to do, he will manage to do. So at the moment, I've only been here a few days, he's already got us gas, done our laundry, and now we've got, what's, what's your friend's name? Musa. Musa. Musa is here to... Uh, to help us with the bimini, to the summer bimini, which uh, is going to be bigger and have sides because we did have problems last year with it uh, just being too hot with that little one we had. So it's all being sorted. So yeah, and this is the man you need to see. I'm sure he'd find you actually if you ever come to Chesme. Okay, I'm in the engine room trying to sort out some of the major winter jobs. Uh, you might notice there's always a bit of a buzz in here when we're on shore power. That's from the isolation transformer that's here, which uh, is a very good thing to have because it stops any stray currents that might be around in a marina giving you electrolysis type problems. But yeah, I'm actually in here trying to uh, sort out things like getting the generator out because that's going to be the position that the uh, new lithium batteries are going to go in there and, uh, and maybe even the water maker. We've got several options of places to put the water maker. But obviously we've got uh, the usual winter jobs to do as well. It's always a good time to change the engine oil, especially if you're laying up, we're not, but um, you know, don't old oil sitting in there. So I'll, I'll change the engine oil now and check everything else over. And one of the things I am checking uh, is this, the Webasto heater here. <clears throat> You'll see I've taken the exhaust pipe off. This is the exhaust pipe that was in there. And the reason for that is out here we have a carbon monoxide alarm and that uh, went off a while ago when we were using the uh, the heater so i thought well okay i need to check things out and i did that today and you can see this is a section of the uh, exhaust i've taken off here it's just sort of gone crunchy if you look at where it came from which is in here this is the point that it went through and you couldn't see anything obviously because it's got the uh, insulation over the top but you know it just pulled apart so yeah that's been letting fumes out into the boat so very good uh, that we had that uh, the carbon monoxide alarm there uh, obviously i'm now gonna have to change that so i'll strip it all out and try and find a new one while i'm in here i just wanted to show you this these are our agm batteries they sat in there can i just get them out they're swollen so much you might have seen uh, early on, it was right at the beginning of the season when these went, you get a slight sort of smell of um, rotten eggs when they start to, to go like this. So we've been trying to poison ourselves all season by the look of it, but I just disconnected these two and been running off the, the Bluetti uh, for the whole year. So that's done us really, really well. Obviously now though, I'm, we're not going to put the lithiums here. They're going to go, as I said, round by with the uh, the generator. So much closer, much shorter um, runs for cable, you know, for, for all the really high draw items like the uh, the inverter and the, the um, starter motor not a good idea to have your batteries a long way away from those because you know even with the really thick cables it's not enough you, you get a voltage drop which I think is probably what's what's led to this uh, this type of thing happening really it's just in a, a, having one battery in the uh, in the engine room and two out here this one's swollen as well just not as badly it's got a crack in it here this one here so it's been venting through there I'm sure 
But yeah, get rid of those and I can use the space in here for something else. Boat jobs aside, Cheshme is a great place to be for the winter. A nautical town with a castle and an established modern marina. Today it is particularly active because it's race weekend, one of the many held here throughout the year, attracting racers from all around the region. Cheshme is known for good wind, but unusually today, it starts out flat calm. Can you believe it? Too much wind for weeks, and now this. But you can see the fleet coming out of Chesme in the background there. They've got the flags ready to go. This is the main one, the class flag. It goes up at four minutes, comes down at one. And this is the one you don't want to see, which is the one that says you've jumped the start. And you have to go back. So let's hope no one does that. I don't think they will because there's so little wind. <laughs> They're going to be going very slowly through the start line. <laughs> or not at all unless things change. After a couple of hours waiting, the wind picks up for the start. On. No good. Take it. But then the wind drops again. The race is abandoned and the fishermen take over to catch lunch. So that's that's the key. Chicken liver on a hook. I'll have to try it. Yeah, oh, plateful. Uh, yeah. well, this is, this is amazing how many you've got. Yeah. These are gopez, yeah? Gopez. Yeah, gopez. Uh -huh. Great. While the fleet makes way slowly back to shore, the evening's entertainment is some compensation. A party open to everyone. I am trying to make the most of the nice weather here as well. You don't want to be stuck inside all the time. So doing a bit of sanding, things like all the, the dog house and the other bits of bright work that need doing. And I'm going to do a bit of uh, mousing through of uh, some of the lines because they just get really salty and hard and horrible. It's really mainly the uh, the sheets that need it. I'm going to do the, the halyard for the, for the Yankee since that's off at the moment and I'll do the others sort of one by one. And also the, the roller reefing lines, they tend when they get sort of a bit hard and horrible and salty not to roll up in the drum quite so well. So I'll definitely do those as well. Go and give them all a nice wash. We actually have soft eyes on the end of all our halyards, which is quite useful because it means actually you can hang them up nicely on the cleats and stuff when you're using them. But also, obviously, it means that you can just nice and easily just tie a bowline through the end of it and pull it through with a mousing line. washing liquid and my first barrel load of ropes you'll be amazed how much running rigging you've got on your boat when you take it off all at once we did it uh, first time in Holland and it was about no it must have been a, about five of these crates full I'm going to take you with me just to show you a little bit of uh, Chesme you can see it's very nice wide pontoons everywhere obviously electric and water at every station good um, security as well it's a security camera just there halfway down and the one at the end of the pontoon here and uh, obviously gates they have gates with a card activation on the way in and out so it's all very nicely done you can see there's some quite big boats here 
from along with uh, oh, a lot of small sailing boats it's mainly sailing boats I think in this marina and obviously mainly Turkish here at the moment although they're going to get more international clientele I think as time goes by there's the castle up the top there and that's the Captain Air's office it's where the uh, all the admins done so yeah it's pretty good you'll see a lot of this as well American flags on there this one's Delaware it says apparently that's nothing to do with uh, I thought there's a lot of Americans here when we first came it's not it's nothing to do with that it's a uh, tax dodge which apparently, she, apparently doesn't exist anymore uh, quite a few boats used to have it I think it's there's less and less now I don't know how that worked yeah, doing a registration in Delaware and uh, getting a better deal but obviously did so yeah coming up to the main office now So we've got our bikes out, they're already there and uh, toilet block is just here I'll show you that actually while we're there as well because it's quite impressive and uh, just around the corner here is where uh, I'm going to wash the ropes because they have actually got a nice outdoor sink which a lot of marinas don't have and they should because it's good So yeah we could have done with a bigger sink really but this will do the job, it's warm water which is quite good I mean, another way you can do this and if I had the, the dinghy still pumped up I might do it it's just to fill the dinghy with water and chuck them all there because that, that gives you a nice big area to do it so the other good thing about washing your ropes is you get a chance to, to check for any chafe and I've got a bit there it's just the outer covering though so that's okay but yeah it's sort of the opportunity to go around and do all that so while that's soaking I'll just uh, show you over here we've got some good recycling which is always good to see and the loos here are quite spectacular uh, got a card for entry and the uh, door opens automatically I have checked there's no one in here and you can see it's all sort of individual units with a loo and a shower which I think is really good I've only ever seen that in Chichester before and don't have to touch the button to go out either it's all sort of covid stuff here same as entry gates you just put your hand up to it and it opens up so yeah quite impressive so while steve's working on the boat i thought i'd go for a walk around the town because the weather is due to close in and you can see i'm not the only one who's had that thought everyone seems to be out working on their boats if they can or taking them out and this is a little bit of the town one thing I did want to show you as well is there are quite a few stray dogs around but they're all very fit and healthy and that's because the municipality take them in neuter them and tag them and then the local community looks after them and they did quite a good job As you walk around, you can see that cats are well fed too. There we are. They're being left water and food and people are quite happy to feed them in the restaurants as well. Turkey is a vast country and acts as a buffer between the Middle East, Russia and the rest of Europe. The coastline north of Çeşme leads to the Black Sea via the Bosporus Strait. At the mouth of the river sits the city of Istanbul. Before the winter sets in, we decide to take a trip to the European side of the city to explore the famous mosques and palaces. And as we'll be driving from the east, that means a trip through the three and a half mile long Eurasia Tunnel. The approach to the tunnel is quite busy with a toll of about five pounds. It does take quite a long time. So this is a pretty impressive tunnel. It seems to go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame it's a tunnel though. This is going under the Bosphorus, so going from the Asian side of Istanbul to the, what they call the European side, obviously it's still Turkey. Uh, but yeah, long, long tunnel. When we get out, we go 
going to be in what was Constantinople. And it's very pretty, I'm told, very many colours and lots of mosques and historic sites. So that's why I chose it. And we shall see. We're in the middle of quite an active part of town. <laughs> yeah, parking's going to be interesting too. I think parking might be out of the question. I hope they have car parks. And finally we made it. <laughs> it really did take an hour in tiny streets with double parking until at last the owner of our Airbnb comes to our rescue. Thank you for finding us a parking space. Thank you. <laughs> this is Istanbul off season. Late November when the tourists have gone home and still it's the most crowded place we've been for years. This is because the area where all the historic mosques and palaces are is compact, so everyone who visits Istanbul comes here. So we're making our way around the mosques. We've been in the Sofia Mosque, which is here. The Blue Mosque behind us sadly is closed. So uh, we're making our way through the crowds to where we're going next. <laughs> it's very crowded. The Tapaki Palace. And we found rather than wait for two hours in a line to get in, and we're told this is a mild stay as far as tourists are concerned, mm -hmm. um, we've booked a guide for pretty much the same price, and they give you your tickets and take you around for an hour or so in a group. We don't usually do that, but <laughs> needs must. So it's a new experience for us, and probably the best way to do it, we think. Yes, <laughs> it's supposed to be one of the seven wonders of the world this place so no, I made that we'll up, see Steve. I told you, Did that. you? That's oh. Not true. That oh is was that a... just to get me in there was yes it, it was yeah oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of the seven wonders but we're, we're sure it's fantastic <laughs> The top Karpi Palace was the home of the Ottoman elite until the empire collapsed after the First World War. For centuries, the emperors, their wives and concubines could stay protected in the palace grounds and never see the outside world. Uh, the Ottoman Sultan Selim III uh, hired some painters from France, from Italy, some tile workers from the Netherlands and so on. And to, uh, this is the throne the Emperor sat on when he held council meetings, and this is the tap that was switched on so the sound of running water would prevent the meeting being overheard. At least that's what the guide told us, and it sounds a good story to me. In fact, every ornate room, every special museum collection has a story, and the sheer scale of the place is quite impressive. But where the Ottomans of yesteryear really excelled is in their mosques, and one of the most beautiful is Hagia Sophia. Shoes taken off and masks put on, the sight and atmosphere is breathtaking. This magnificent building was first a church in 500 AD and remained the world's largest cathedral for nearly a thousand years. I think you can go to a different mosque every day of the week. That's a lovely one. Around the back of the mosque, the tombs of some of the emperors and their children. Remember, only one of the sons will succeed his father. The others were killed. Back to the 21st century, and the other draw to the city is food. From rooftop cafes with stunning views to the markets. Spices. 
Yes, spices and beans and nuts and Turkish delights of all shapes and sizes. Stop me now. Beautiful cheese. Yes, yes, yes. It's lovely. <laughs> Multicoloured olives. Who would have thought? No trip to the city would be complete without a present for Fair Isle, so we cross back to the Asian side in search of a very special Chandler. So we're on the ferry across the Bosphorus. It's a bit windy and chilly. I am frozen, I have to admit. <laughs> It's November, so it's my own fault. I should have packed posts. <laughs> but if we do decide to come into the Black Sea, this is where you'd have to go. Right the way up through the middle of the Bosphorus. The, uh, there's a couple of bridges, but they're all big enough. So you go straight the way through. Quite a busy uh, bit of the seaway, though. Quite a lot going on in here, as you'd expect. So we're taking a little bit of a break from looking at mosques. Which is a bit of a shame because they are lovely. But needs <laughs> must. Trend Marine. We're going to come here just to look at uh, their Spectra water makers because that's, that's what we've decided hey. we really need. And they've got three on here that are on test that we can have a look at. Yeah. So let's go and have a look. Let's go. <laughs> we have already decided on the Ventura model. So this visit to see Octe is to confirm our choice and see the system close up. Ventura is very easy to fit. Yeah. Very easy. And the power consumption is, is, is like a joke. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, it's it's amazing. amazing. Ten 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 absolutely incredible. incredible. Yeah. One of the main of reasons course. I I really like the Spectra is the clock pump, which is, is this bit here. This is it? the uh, special for the uh, Spectra. This is the innovative side of our system. This is clock pump. Mm -hmm. And the Clark pump is the reason why we have so less energy consumption. Yeah. And the Clark pump, what we are produce, where we are providing to the boat owner, we tell the owners that 10% of the seawater supply turns to fresh water. So you don't need to make any adjustment for it, for the pressure regulation. Yeah. You don't need to make any regulation. It's just a uh, constant output and the variable pressure inside, you don't do anything. Yeah. So it's constantly gives 10% of the inlet seawater as an output to you. What we advise generally, use every day if possible. If you, and, and, and make a fresh water flush after every use. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you can't use it a week, then you need to make, let's show it here, fresh water flush every week. Yeah. Every week, but if you, if you can't come on board, then you need to put a chemical in. Yeah. But Spectra is giving you another solution. It's patented. Yes. This so on ZI, and I want to show you the So Z. it's an, a new type yeah, of filter. It is. it is just, you, we just get the uh, carbon filter case out. Yeah. This is a, a new case coming with this electric supply system. Mm -hmm. We put it in, and this is giving, when you make a uh, fresh water flush, when you do, it sends the silver ions in the system. Yeah. So it keeps the system fresh to one month so you you yeah. have you don't have one week now you have one month yeah a happy conclusion to our short istanbul trip and on the way back we can't resist this shot where there is sea there are fishermen bringing home the tea yeah it was good to get up to istanbul quite a long way though about seven hours from here but good roads mm, yeah empty as well but that's probably because they're quite expensive the toll roads were about the same price as a car hire i think yeah it? i think so it got it pretty much got there <laughs> but it was good to see spectra yes that's right yeah the water makers all lined up six week lead time they say so after yeah. christmas that'd be going in obviously we'll have a video of the whole thing <laughs> and uh, the generator has maybe found a good home ennis said he might want it. Yeah, it's half out. You'll see that in the <laughs> next episode as well, I'm sure. Uh, we're going to be shoehorning the rest of that out uh, in, the, in the next week or so and 
Yeah, and this hopefully is going to is going to make use of it for a little project he's got. So if yep. he can fix it, that'd be good. He can have it absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it would be nice if he could bring our sale back. We still haven't got that back, and we did think we'd try and get maybe one or two sales in before Christmas. Well, yeah, that's what it the depends. hope was. But the problem yeah. is that you're always halfway through a job as well as everything else. The weather up and down, and you know bits mm. everywhere for, from jobs. So yeah, we've got to get things sorted and and then do it. And we do have to lift the boat at some point as well. That's we do. I think that's going to be January, mm. February maybe. Yeah. But we are, the one thing we are going to do, though, I think, is go to see a town called Ephesus, which is the pinnacle of historic towns. Yeah. It makes Delos fade into insignificance, <laughs> I'm told. Delos with steroids. <laughs> it's, it's massive and uh, in, you know, absolutely ancient stuff that goes on forever. So everyone that's been there said it's brilliant. So we definitely want to do that. We will. And we'll continue with the Zoom calls. We've had a couple now. Mm. Um, seems to be popular, seems to be... Yeah, something that people want to attend and we love doing it and chatting to you, well, our patrons at least, in, in real life. Yeah, we couldn't do it for everyone. I think it'd be too many, even the patrons. It's, <laughs> you get, we did, we've done two, one for uh, Southern Hemisphere, one for the Northern, mm. and the Northern one uh, had quite a few. But we've done the first one and yeah, we want to continue that. Yeah, chatting, chatting fun. over the winter. Yeah. So thank you very much to our patrons, speaking of you. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you to our subscribers and thank you for watching. Thanks for watching.